In this lesson, we're going to consider the internal and the external customer, how marketing is used to build and nurture customer relationships, and we'll begin to build your knowledge on customer loyalty. So let's begin by looking at external customers and internal customers. For the purposes of an introduction to marketing such as this, the more generic terms for different types of char and characters of people with which an organization develops relationships would include customers, users, connected stakeholders, and other stakeholders. We'll now look at how we differentiate between the internal and the external customer. So our internal customers are those colleagues and departments within your organization. Again, in the previous module, we looked at internal functions and, and how marketing can be used internally for the flow of internal services and communications. Sometimes you are the customer and sometimes you're the service provider. We considered how marketing connected internally and how marketing interacts with research and development, production, operations, logistics, human resources, IT and customer service. There are, of course, many other internal parts of the business. External customers are more likely to be customers, users and stakeholders. As we said in previous lessons, Customers are those that exchange money for goods and services, and consumers are those that actually use the product. And as we said, they may or not be the same person. So a user is the same as a consumer. According to Blythe, stakeholders are people who are impacted by corporate activities. An obvious stakeholder might be a shareholder, since they have voting rights at annual general meetings. A less obvious stakeholder would be the person that owns the land next to the factory or the family that is supported by the father that works at the warehouse. So stakeholders would include publics such as shareholders, customers, staff and the local community. A connected stakeholder is one with the direct association with your business and this would be a supplier or shareholder. Obviously other stakeholders would not be the same in terms of their connection, for example in the case of the local community which has a weaker connection. We're going to look at Starbucks Coffee as an example of a company that has both internal and external customers and we should be able to apply some of the terminology that we introduced previously. The internal customer will be the people that work within the business of Starbucks. The internal customers will be everyone from the board of directors of the company to the supervisors and the team members that serve coffee at the customer interface. So information and communication will flow from the board of directors to the people on the ground and data and feedback from customers can flow from the people in the coffee shops back to the internal customers in the marketing department. External customers and consumers will be the everyday public that come into the coffee shop and buy the coffee for themselves and their friends. Of course, the user will be the consumer of the product, whether that is the purchaser or not. The connected stakeholder will be the coffee suppliers from around the world and the pension schemes that own shares in the business. Other stakeholders will include other businesses which are based around the Starbucks stores, as well as those impacted by the environment around coffee plantations, which is something that Starbucks is very keen to deal with since it has an ethical purchasing policy. So marketing today is very much focused upon business relationships, especially in B2B or business to business markets. Historically, companies would manufacture products that would be promoted to customers. However, as markets have become more competitive, marketing companies seek to attract customers by building strong relationships so that customers are retained. So you're basically keeping hold of your customers. This is the basis for relationship marketing which we consider here as marketing and the customer relationship. So think about the added value that high quality airlines such as Emirates provide. Companies such as these are specialists in building the customer relationship and it's obvious that they add value at every point, every and each customer contact point. You are treated to high levels of service from the moment that you check in, during the flight, and even when you finish using their service. For example, airlines have air, air miles promotions and upgrades which keep the customer flying with that company and retains them as a customer. The key to the relationship marketing is 
the long-term customer relationship. So if you recall your introduction to marketing definitions, which is in another screen capture video if you wish to go and review it again, this is at opposite ends of the scale to the good old fashioned production or product orientation, which is the basis for modern marketing. As a rule of thumb, relationship marketing tends to be practiced well in the airline industry and in the travel industry. However, branding is another way of maintaining the customer relationship as is innovation and design. Nike and Apple may not deliver the same amount of face-to-face -face relationship building, but they do have very loyal long-term customers. Try to think of other examples of businesses that practice strong relationship marketing. At this point in our studies, we can now identify a path which connects the marketing concept, customer focus, and relationship marketing. The marketing concept centers all organization activities upon the customer, which is our customer focus. And if we think in terms of the long term, we now have added our relationship marketing. Marketing focuses everything on our customer and their recruitment their retention into the long term, and finally, marketing aims to extend products and services to the same customers from other product categories. So historically, marketers would acquire or recruit customers, whereas today we acquire customers and then we retain them. There are a couple of uh, theoretical tools that we're going to use here. So in this next section, we're going to take a look at Pareto Principle and the Loyalty Ladder both of which help us to understand how we move from customer acquisition to customer retention and the implications for marketing. So I suggest that you go and look at the short screen capture videos which follow this one.